Hi, Hi folks. folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home and moved to a tiny, nearly 200-year-old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. In this episode, we begin refurbishing our stone outbuilding, which we believe was used for housing livestock well over a century ago. Plus, lots of other adventures. Join us as we continue... Live in the sky life It's Monday morning and we've just placed an order for materials to convert this, the buyer. But in order to convert it, we're going to get measurements. Now I came out to try and measure it and I thought, you know what? It's going to make my life so much easier if this partition wall isn't here. And it isn't structural at all. It's just to divide the buyer into two rooms. So I need this and this wall is coming down. We're going to put it back up again because we do want to keep the two spaces, one for you and one for me. It's going to come down because it's just going to get in the way. We're fitting out this whole room and this partition but there's no reason for it to be there. Okay. So I'm going to take it out and then we can get it measured properly and it'll be one big room rather than this sort of divided room. It's going to be so much easier to work in. It's coming down. Thor's hammer! Is every hammer Thor's hammer? Yes. Okay, I'm out in the bar myself now. Let's get this place cleared out of all this stuff and then get that wall down. Let's do this, folks. Okay, that's the wall cleared anyway. I'll start taking that down now. I'm hoping I don't have to move all my fishing stuff. I can probably get away with that amount of room working from the other side. So I might have to move it, I hope not, because it's just a lot of fuss I'd rather avoid. Anyway, let's get this wall down. Just stop the time lapse to show you this. It's a total white out out there. Mad. This weather is so crazy. These things here, the roofing screws, but I don't have the tool to get them off. So I've had to batter them into submission, which has been quite interesting to say the least. I've got that one off. I've actually been burning that with a cigarette lighter to get it off and the bottom two I've managed to get all the plastic off. That probably took me just as long as it took to get that piece off the wall out. Just getting the plastic off those screws. So thanks for that Richard if you're watching. <laughs> I know this was your work. To make matters nice and easy, the screw can't come out from there because this part of the hinge is in the way. So I'm having to cut it with a hacksaw. So I'll film it from the other side and you'll see the door falling down eventually. That's if that hacksaw is good enough to get through that bolt. We will see. I would say the hacksaw was good enough. That's the door. Freed. Oh, it's heavy. Proper old door. I bet that's the door from the buyer originally. Right, getting somewhere now. Now I need to get rid of this. I need to move all that stuff that's there over there and then get rid of this wall and chuck it out the door as well. This is a fun day. <laughs> This used to be a holiday cottage before we moved in, so they had these key safes. I want to save them because we might find a use for them later, so I'll take these off. There's one down there as well. So I'm going to take them off before I start smashing the heck out of that wall. There we are, that's both the locks off there. I can reuse them now if I want to at some point. And there's my cup of tea that Sarah just brought me out, which was very kind. It's just starting to uh, lighten up out there. Actually, I'm not sure. I think the snow's coming back on again. Oh well, look at that snow on the boards, brilliant. 10 minutes later, the sun comes out and it's like it never happened at all. Where's the snow? Well, maybe a wee bit on the wood. That's about it. And uh, Probably on the trees as well, but yeah, you know what I mean. That's sky for you. Dolly the weather, wait 10 minutes. That's all the uh, board out anyway now. 
So I'm going to dismantle that frame because I'm going to use that wood again. That's perfectly good wood. If I can use most of that, I'll be really happy. The problem is it's such old wood. It's really, really, really hard and it's hard to get the nails out. So I might have to cut some of it. But I'm going to try and save as much as I possibly can. But that's after lunch. <laughs> You look quite pink in the face, so you've obviously been working hard. I love that old door from the middle. Yeah. Definitely have to salvage that. Definitely have, yeah. I'll put it on the shed, eh? Yeah, I could put it on the shed. That was your idea. Oh, I missed a bit. Look at that. Oh, no. That. Well, you can... Amateur. You can film that coming off. That's if I can get that. There you go. That was the very last piece that hey. I missed. This is the new era of the buyer. It's going to become a creative space. It's probably been lots of things, but this is this new vocation in life. <laughs> new honest. era. Yeah. And that is the first job in the buyer conversion done. Let's have a look. Where did the partition wall go? Oh yeah, there. Let's check it out. Look at those nails that were in that wood. Should really have had a pry bar for this job, but I don't, so I got by with that little hammer and my uh, massive axe, which I used as a sledgehammer. Anyway, doesn't matter about tools, it's done. I'm happy, the buyer is now open and I'm gonna repurpose all this wood that I can for the log store, which is going around the side of the buyer. This is what I'm planning to make the log store down the side of the buyer on this little raised bit. I wonder if it's been a log store or similar before. It's got little cobbles there, you see? That'll make a perfect log store. I'll have a little lean-to coming from up there, down. The wooden frame that I'll build to suit the shape of this. But first, I really am gonna go and have my lunch now. <laughs> All these bits of wood are full of nails. I've just started pulling them out, just bending them back with pliers and then hammering them through and then pulling them out with a claw hammer. This is a lovely piece of timber, so it's definitely getting reused. But then there's pieces like this as well, which is all rotten at the bottom. So I'm not even gonna try and salvage that. I'm just gonna cut it up, put it in the car and take it to the tip. I'm doing the very important job of bringing you cups of tea. Yes, the second one is up there. Very nice of you indeed. <laughs> I am reclaiming wood and this pile here is all the stuff that I can use again and this pile here is all the stuff that's been damaged, split or has rotted so I'm just taking these nails out and then this plank, it's quite a small plank but it's hardwood so it's worth keeping I don't know what I'll use a wee bit like that for but if I don't have it then I'll need it for sure Sorry if the camera's shaking a bit guys, uh, it's really cold <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, when you've been sitting inside editing and not doing lots of manual labour. Yeah. It stopped snowing though, just... So that's the pile of unsalvageable, rotten, split, no good wood, which we think we may actually burn tonight in the fire pit because it's untreated, so it should be fine just to burn. And this is the wood that I've managed to keep. Nice neat ends and a lot of that is hardwood as well, so I'm quite chuffed with that. So that's a result. That's a lot of salvaged materials. Happy days. There's our fire pit. And unfortunately, we weren't able to enjoy it because a blizzard came in. And I mean, absolutely ridiculous. It was absolutely tipping it down. So we didn't want to sit out in that. That happened after I'd lit it, of course. But at least we got rid of some of those damaged beams anyway. Shame we didn't get to enjoy that. And it started snowing again, just as I said that. doing some more work on the buyer and constructing the log store today and I'm taking Jack out we're at the beach it's really snowy I thought today for your enjoyment I would show you a bit of footage from Jack's perspective he's wearing the GoPro and I apologize if anyone doesn't like roller coasters because we do try to slow this footage down but it doesn't make it any less crazy let's turn this camera on and show you what Jack sees there it is there's Jack cam Hi everyone!
is glorious today. Hey pups! Come on! I think he's enjoying himself. I hope you're enjoying all the Jack Cam footage. enjoyed Jack Ham as much as Jack did. We're pretty much done now, we're gonna get home, get him dry and see if Ollie needs any help with that log store. See you there. Just like that, it's winter again. Jack Spaniels came at the house for about, I don't know, one minute. Look at the tracks, all the way over there, all the way over here, all the way around there into the barn. He did all that in about a minute. Very thorough searching and snuffling for who knows what. Oh, he was round there as well. <laughs> and round here. <laughs> that dog is so funny. Oh, and all the way up there as well. Yep, that's Jack. It's a very cold morning at Skylife Cottage. It's actually minus five degrees this morning, but I've got work to do. The buyer needs clearing out. I need to make a log store. There's a lot to get on with. So uh, yeah, let's get on with this. Let's do it. This is the metal sheeting that I'm going to be using on the roof of the log store. What I didn't realize is that most of it's been down on the floor underneath logs, so they don't touch the floor and don't get damp. The problem is now that they're covered in logs and covered in stuff, so I need to get them out of there because I need to use them later on today to build the log store, which is currently these shelves. They're fine for the purpose they were intended, but that's not what I want them for. So I'm going to dismantle this. First thing I've got to do is get rid of everything that's on there, put it somewhere, I don't know where yet, and then build a log store at the side of the buyer. First thing is, get those sheets off the ground. This isn't water ingress, this is condensation on the inside because the roof is watertight. So this is why we're going to have to insulate in there and put in a membrane. But that's a job for later. These are the metal sheets that I just dug out. These are great, they're going to be the roof off the new log store, which I'm building around the corner and I'll show you where I'm putting it. Log store's going in the corner, just there. 
you can see it's a raised platform already and inside is all cobbles. I thought it might be like a flower bed or something, but it's not. It's little cobbles. So I think that had a purpose in the past. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a log store in the past. Down here, you can clearly see the line. This is modern concrete. I reckon this is less than 10 years old. And all they've done is build a brand new floor up against the wooden partition that was here that I smashed out already. So what I'm gonna have to do next is find out if this floor is good enough to build on top of. And if not, I'm gonna have to dig that up and pour new concrete. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. But in the meantime, next job is get all this stuff out, get all the stuff off those shelves, and then dismantle these racks and make them into a log store. Let's do this. I'm very lucky because it's a sunny day today so I can put stuff out on the lawn. Normally you can't do that in sky because it'll get soaking wet from the rain or it'll get blown away by the winds. Today it's still, it's a beautiful day so I can put stuff all over the lawn, get it out of the way and put it back in. Whether it be the log store or the buyer, we'll see. But let's just get on with this. <laughs> So that's the racks completely cleared now and I found this great big board as well. I'm going to use that for the bottom, I think, to keep the logs off the ground. Oh, and here comes our little friend. And what did you do a minute ago? What did you do to Dad's bag of floats, Jack? Did you whittle on them? Yes, you did. You whittled on the floats. And now I'm going to have to clean the bag because there's doggy whittle on it. Yep, who did that? Who whittled on Dad's bag? Stop whittling on things, Jack. Not everything's getting chucked away, you know. This is what came out of the bar so far, not including the Spaniel. Most of that will be getting chucked away, I think. Some of it will be getting kept, like this cool map. This is an old map of Sky. I love that, but the frame's getting chucked. I'll just keep the actual print inside. So now I've got to disassemble this. This entire rack is coming down. I don't know how it's going to come down. I don't know if it's screwed to the floor. I don't know if it's screwed to the walls. But we're going to find out. I'm going to time lapse this because it's going to take a while. <laughs> some bits. Now I need to tidy up the boards, cut off any other nails that are in the way with the hacksaw. The reason I'm doing that is because the nails are so old and so rusted into the wood that you would actually split the ends of the boards and that happened on one of them so I had to cut the boards but the rest of them I managed to salvage with the hacksaw by cutting through the nails behind the gap. And there we are, we've got a huge pile of usable wood and we've got corrugated iron as well, old stuff that they must have had on their roof originally. So I'm going to use that corrugated iron as a moisture barrier to prevent the water getting to the timbers. But now I've got all this usable wood so I can crack on and build my log store. Something else I'm going to have to do is a bit of repointing. If you look down there, that's been patched up fairly recently. But there is holes all the way around. The walls are pretty good. They're in pretty good order. But there are areas that will need repointing. So I'm going to do that as well. The more you rip away on jobs like this, the more you find. It's fine, because in the long term, it's going to look beautiful and it's going to be a beautiful place for us to work. In the short term, I've got to get my sleeves rolled up. This is the pile of wood that I'm not going to reuse because it's too rotten or it's just too flimsy for the job. But this is pretty cool. It's an old packing crate. I wonder how old that is. Top, fragile, bottom. And then something even cooler over here that I spotted earlier. And I think it's complete. Albeit under other tools. Check that out. That's an old scythe. That is so cool. I wonder how old that is. That's a really cool find. I'm going to incorporate that in the buyer somehow. When it's finished, I'm going to keep that. It's the only tool from that period. It's still got wood in there, see that? I wonder if I could restore that. That's so nice. I bet it's still sharp as well. What a lovely little find that is. All right, so I've laid them out on the floor. So there's two corrugated sheets that I'm going to use. Probably have to cut the corner off there, but I'll do that a bit later. I was just trying to figure out if I needed to get more. I definitely don't. I've actually got a spare sheet left after that. And underneath those sheets, I've got these old corrugated iron parts that were on the racking. And all the logs will just get piled on top of these. This is an offcut from when this roof was put on. In fact, all of these spare sheets are from when that roof was put on. They've just been extra 
so they're getting used now, which is great. Next thing is build the frame, so let's do that. If you've watched our previous videos, you may remember the semi-wild horses that roam around the foreshore just outside our cottage. These horses are actually Highland Ponies, one of three breeds that are native to the Scottish Highlands and Islands. They were originally bred to work on the small farms and crofts of Scotland. Maybe the original inhabitants of this cottage would have owned one. I was really keen to paint one, but I was quite nervous about starting this piece. The two things that I find really challenging to paint are fur or hair, and subjects that are white or off-white in colour, both of which apply here. Off-white subjects are so hard to capture, as they take on the colours from the environment around them. Here I'm having to use cool blue-grey for the shadows, and warm yellowy-browns for the side of the pony that is catching the sun. The ponies in our glen originally lived on the nearby island of Rum, and they do belong to one of the crofters here. However, they are left to roam semi-wild, foraging for grass and seaweed on the foreshore. I normally like to break down my paintings into different sections that I can work on separately. However, I couldn't really do this with the pony, as the coat and mane flow into one another, so I had to work on it as a whole. Dark details, especially the eyes and nose, help to bring this pony to life on the page. Without the dark background, I needed to exaggerate some of the shadows to make the shape pop off the page. I usually create my own black tones by mixing shades of dark red and green, plus a little brown or blue to give it a warm or cool tone. I find it gives a more natural tone than just using the black paint supplied. This is the first 
first time I've done a full length painting of a horse like this, so I'm glad I challenged myself, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this feature, you can see more of my work over on my own YouTube channel, She Walks, She Paints, where I take you on walks all over Scotland and paint something that I find in watercolour. Prints of this painting are available on the She Walks, She Paints Etsy store now. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. The reason we're showing you uh us filming is because today we're trying out my new microphone with a sound muffler on it. But a few people saying that there was a bit of wind noise in the videos, which I mean, we totally get because there is a bit of wind noise in the videos. We're on Sky. Anything that we can do to prevent it, such as this thing here, which you'll probably see from Sarah's angle. Hi. <laughs> uh, should be better. The trouble is, there's no uh, wind today at all. So, uh, I'll probably test this another time, but a big thank you to our patrons and to our Kofi supporters because it's down to you guys that we were able to afford these things. This is a Rode microphone which was about £70 and the selfie stick is from GoPro and it was £20. So by contributing towards this channel you are literally helping us make the videos. So thanks to our patrons, thanks to our Kofi supporters. Well, the windscreen test was non-conclusive because unlike Sky, there's absolutely no wind today. It's a beautiful day, but there's no wind. So I can't test out the sound muffler, but uh, you just have to take my word for it that I'm told it works very well from all the stuff that I watched on YouTube. Because that test was inconclusive, I decided to come out again. This is a slightly windier day today. So let's test this microphone out. I've got it on just now. I'm going to take it down to the beach and then I'm going to film first of all without it and second of all with it. The next piece of footage will just be the iPhone microphone, not the Rode microphone. Let's try this. This is me filming with just the iPhone. This is just the iPhone microphone. And I bet that that sounds horrible because it's quite windy. This is me just walking with the iPhone itself, with no external microphone and no fluffy, just the phone. This is with the Rode microphone, with the fluffy. So hopefully that makes a difference. This is me now walking with the Rode microphone. Well, having heard that, I think it's pretty conclusive. Although it's impossible to eliminate wind noise outdoors, we think that this is a big improvement. Thanks for the heads up from some of our viewers. You suggested and we listened. Jack having a snooze has absolutely nothing to do with any of this, but he looks cute, so, well, yeah, there he is. Someone's made progress. Now, you might notice that some of these beams look a bit wonky, and that's because, well, they are. With the raised platform being uneven and the buyer itself being on a slope, I decided to put in single nails so that the structure could move around on these pivots and find its own position naturally. Also, all the beams could be, and were, moved around to suit. It was only when I was happy with the final position that the permanent nailing together took place.
did, did it. it! We have a log store, which was, up until very recently, a partition wall and a great big rack storage unit. Now we have a log store and I'm very happy. Are you happy? I'm very happy. I'm very hungry as well. Yeah, we're going to go have something to eat now. Oh, what just flew over? I'll actually show you the front now as well. I actually said, oh, if you can get your uh, phone. Ooh. Hey! Okay, ignore the box of kindling at the top. Otherwise, I think that looks pretty good. It does. The ground was totally uneven and the buyer is uneven as well. So it's on a slope. So everything that we did, we had to do and then sometimes we had to redo. And then we finally got there. It was the whole day from the moment I woke up this morning until now, which is about half past six. Nearly dark. Yeah. Sun's gone down. Not tired, honest. You've left um, a crowbar up the top there. Oh yeah. Hey, you're just going to crowbar that in, aren't you? Hey. Okay. Let's go in yep. and chill. It's like a fire. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching our video and for liking, commenting and subscribing. It really does help our channel out and it's free. So if you want to give us a subscribe, please do. We really appreciate it. The painting of the horse that Sarah did is now available on Etsy. So go and grab that. That's available on the She Walks, She Paints Etsy store. If you wish to be a patron of Living the Sky Life, you can do so on patreon.com. Hello Jack. If you just want to buy us a coffee, you can do so over on Kofi. All contributions make a difference and we really appreciate your support. Thank you. We're leaving our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life it's all coming together. It's very nerve-wracking. And it's very, very expensive. Well, he always brings me the nicest presents while I'm working. And speaking of bottoms... Someone just came into my studio and did a stinky pump, didn't they? If you click on the left icon, you can subscribe to Living the Sky Life. If you click on the right icon, it'll take you back to our very first episode.